think that we can all imagine that one family member that if they come to the family dinner things might get a little bit heated <laughs> that when they walk through the door with a hello they're met with a resounding oh no well allow me to be that family member for today my name is Dise Tsomashifani Wanoni and I'm a South African playwright and theatre maker who would like to investigate this oh no why the oh no? What is the consequence of this oh no? Is it maintaining an awkward silence as we stare at each other with memories of the past like there's something that we need to talk about? Just imagine that I stood here and kept quiet for the remainder of this talk You'd probably think, well, that talk was a failure. But funny enough, I think that my point would be made. In that in the context of a gathering, oh no acts as a placeholder for, we shall not discuss this. Not now, not here, not ever. Let's just eat in peace. Oh no acts as a deterrent in maintaining the pretense of a blissful environment but ignorance is only bliss for a limited amount of time because we're going to have to talk about it eventually so Tizazo, what is it exactly that you want to speak about well thank you for asking <laughs> i want to speak to the theme of reimagining our future because it alludes to the idea of ideas ideologies and practices that are just not working anymore as a storyteller, my job is to literally imagine things into existence. But I'd like to think that I use my imagination in a position of servitude. In that with the freedom to imagine is a responsibility to remain critical of what's in front of you, especially in a time of instability. Because that's when real growth tends to happen. Now this is one of those things that's easier said than done. But practically speaking, I tend to imagine in response to a crisis, in whatever capacity I find myself in at that time, so be it as a 12-year-old girl, or an 18-year-old prefect, or a 23-year-old, fresh out of university, kind of adult human being, it always comes down to one question. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it is a lovely question because it is a practical question. It doesn't wait for maybe, I'll do it later, we'll talk about it later, or somebody else will do it. It demands to be dealt with then and there. Because things can only happen when we act and things can only be reimagined when our minds are engaged. Now my first big what are you going to do about it came in 2015 when I came across the story about an underaged boy at a South African school who was sexually assaulted by his peers with a toothbrush and a broomstick in front of a dormitory of similarly underaged peers. And it's this image of a group of boys in who knows where South Africa, where in one night we saw one boy become the victim of a gross injustice. Another group of boys become non-consensual witnesses to such a violent act and then the last group of boys become sexual offenders, all under the age of 18, on the cusp of adulthood, on the cusp of manhood, rendered into a silence in the name of, ah, ah we're not going to talk about it, not now, not here, not ever. My response to this crisis was to spend two years writing a script after interviewing ex-schoolboys and gathering a lovely group of gentlemen to perform in the controversial stage play that has brought me here today. A play called Sainted. Sainted follows the story of five matric boys at an all-boys South African school experiencing varying levels of racial and sexual injustices. The responses that we've gotten from sainthood include tears, anger, and sighs of relief. But most often, we get questions of who, when, where, why, and what are we going to do about it? And that's the beauty of questions. They demand to be answered. 
Now what I brought to the table with Sainted was essentially a boy's story that went beyond what happened in that dormitory in 2015. It became a story about the youth that thought that their traumas were not seen. The recipe that makes up Sainted is very easy to follow. It was basically violence wrapped in silks and pinks. It told the story of students who held each other in times of strain, wrapped themselves in silk when they were feeling fragile and they were basked in soft cotton pinks rather than red rage. And this was so that their traumas could visually be seen and consumed differently. But often I am asked as to why I decided to depict a boy's story with silks and pinks, but not a lash was fluttered as to why I decided to use the violence. How do we reimagine a future where the past and present gives way for traumas to be re-performed and then locked away in a lovely little locket of silence, especially when we all know what happened in that dormitory was not a singular incident? It was just one that just happened to be made in the public eye. Can we inspect the mouths of us, the inheritors of the earth, as we desperately scramble for crumbs that have fallen off the past dinner table? Because we have youths walking around mourning their younger selves before their bones even have a chance to grow into their strengths, screaming into the mouths of their futures. But we're too young to be screaming. We're too young to be grieving. And we're too young to be giving influence and authority to a past that has a fine print that was not written for us in the first place. Sometimes I wonder what would have happened if I decided to respond to that story with, oh no, I'm not getting involved in this. Please, pass me the salt. What a beautiful day. <laughs> Can we reimagine our gathering? Where members don't arrive with their heads bowed, fingers clutching at cold dishes for dear life, dishes we painstakingly made to be shared with in the first place. That we don't walk over the rug that has too much swept under it already in the name of oh no. So I ask one last time, why the oh no? What is the consequence to this oh no? Hopefully it's not another awkward silence, but rather an oh no, I didn't think about it that way. Or oh no, what are we going to do about it? Or oh no, please continue. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>